Hi guys, welcome back to the Tech Chat. Now this is what most people think a desktop PC looks like, a gaming rig. A big, heavy tower that gives you a good workout every time you want to move it. It weighs about 15 kilograms. This is a proper behemoth of a PC, but it's not unusual. It's only a mid-tower Antec 900 II. Now compare this to this. This is the Silverson Raven RVZ02 case. And if I put it side by side, you'll see it is a lot smaller. It's lighter, thinner, narrower, pretty much in every dimension, it's a lot, lot smaller. Anyone can build a mini ITX PC like this. And it's so small, it's so much more convenient. It is literally console size. Of course, for those of you out there who are serious overclockers or perhaps have older, less efficient and hotter hardware, you may be concerned that cases like this, which have no fans, you may have issues around cooling and temperatures. Well, in my experience with the 1060 graphics card in here and the latest Skylake processor, so it was only around five to eight degrees hotter than in the full size desktop here. Of course, the fans are smaller. There's no actual fans on the case and generally there's just less airflow going around, but actually stood up in this vertical position, which is better than uh, horizontally for cooling. It wasn't that much hotter, but in return for being a little bit more fiddly to put together, you do get a thin and light gaming PC, which I can just really easily pick up like this and, you know, take wherever I want. If you want to take it to your mate's house for a LAN party, an old school LAN party, uh, or in my case, it's quite convenient because I live uh, half the week in London, so I can just chuck it in a bag, not chuck it, carefully put it in a bag and take it up with me. So the portability is really useful. And also the fact that I actually have a HTC Vive headset, the v virtual reality headset, which I use in my living room because that's the only space I actually is big enough for the Vive. But there's no reason that the next build that you guys have, whether you build it yourself, you uh, you know buy a pre-built one, it shouldn't be a mini ITX PC like this because there's really not that many compromises at all. You can still get the same speed, the same performance out of it in something that's just a lot easier to move about or have about in your house. So how does it all work? How does everything fit in here? And what do you need to do to build one like this? Well, first of all, let's talk about motherboards. There are three main kinds for desktop PCs. From small to large, you've got mini ITX, which is in here, micro ATX, and ATX, which I have the full size one in the desktop PC. Of course, with reduced size comes some reduced functionality. More than one graphics card in SLI and Crossfire isn't really an option here in Mini ITX, as you probably only have one or two PCIe ports. And there's also, there's only two RAM slots on these motherboards as well. Yet, despite that, this Raven case can still fit two solid state drives, a slim optical disk drive, and crucially, a full size 13 inch graphics card. So you can stick your GTX 1080 or your Titan X in here if you want to. And while in the past we may have worried about temperatures and overheating, these latest Pascal graphics cards from Nvidia and Polaris from AMD are not only faster, cooler, quieter and more power efficient, but they also offer the latest ports including HDMI 2.0b and DisplayPort 1.4. So it's a perfect time to build a new PC and why not go for a more portable, still powerful mini ITX build. So I've gone with the ASUS Z170i Pro Gaming Motherboard. It's a great choice and the one I'm using in this machine. For the processor, I went with the top-end Intel i7 Skylake 6700K. Now I do a lot of video editing, so I make use of the hyper-threading technology, but if you're just doing it for gaming or you want to spend a little bit less money, the i5 6600K is probably the best option, particularly for gamers. For cooling, I went with the Silverstone SST AR06, which is quite a bit better than a stock Intel fan, but still small enough to fit in this case. As for the RAM, since there are only two slots available in the Raven case, I opted for two 8GB, 3200 megahertz DDR4 G-Skill modules. As for storage, well, this motherboard does support the latest M2 storage, which is super fast, but still quite expensive. And since I already had a couple of SSDs for my old desktop PC, I just use those. As for graphics, I've chosen to go with the ASUS ROG Strix 1060 OC. It's a terrific card and great for gaming at 1080p and 1440p. Although for the highest frame rates, or if you play at 4K, the 1070 or 1080 probably would be a better option. Alternatively, the AMD RX 480 is a great budget option, but all of these cards have the latest ports and support VR, which is one of the reasons you might want a portable smaller PC in the first place. As for the power supply, I'm using the Corsair SF600, so I've got 600 watts to play with, but how much power you need depends on what components you use. PC Part Picker is a great tool for adding all of your components together and then seeing what the power requirement would be for them. But importantly for use in these small PCs, you need to get a SF or SFX power supply, which stands for small form factor. Standard power supplies simply won't fit. And also try to avoid SFX PSUs with a fan smaller than 90 millimeters, like 60 millimeters 
millimeters, which are quite common, as larger fans don't have to spin quite as fast and are therefore quieter, which is quite important if you have your PC in your living room or on your desk like this. So make sure it's a small form factor PSU, make sure you've got enough power, and also make sure the fans are a bit bigger than 60 millimeters. I put links in the description below to all of my recommended parts as well if you want to go and check those out. So the overall cost for this build without Windows or the SSDs is around a thousand pounds or twelve hundred dollars. But if you opt for the i5 rather than the i7 and perhaps get a cheaper model of the graphics card, maybe a cheaper 1060 or the budget RX 480, that'll knock a couple of hundred off. And that's not bad at all, I don't think, for what is a very capable PC which you can easily build yourself. So that's the big question really. How easy is it to build a mini ITX PC like this? Well, of course, the benefit of full size or mid tower PCs is there's loads of room to install all the components. Cable management is much easier and it's generally a simpler experience. So most people think building mini ITX PCs like this are gonna be really hard and are to be avoided. But while it definitely depends on the case you go for, I was honestly surprised how easy it was working with this Silverson Raven case. I'll admit there were a couple of points where I needed tweezers to slot in some of the power cables in the motherboard, but other than that, it was a really straightforward process. And the best part about this case is that the graphics card has its own compartment. You get a PCI extender bundled with the case, which is on the other side of all the other components. So it's much better for cooling, it's much easier for swapping cards in and out. It's as simple as just slotting the card in and then plugging in the six pin power supply. Now I won't go into the full details of how to build a PC in this video as that probably deserves one by itself. But here's a quick time lapse of how it all went together. So it really isn't very hard at all. Anyone can build a mini ITX PC. Just make sure you've got all the right components to start with, perhaps all laid out to make it simple, including thermal paste. People always forget to buy thermal paste for the processor, as well as a screwdriver and the manual for the case and the motherboard to hand. And two or three cups of tea later, you're all done. It's actually a remarkably simple process and not much harder at all than building a full-size ATX PC in a, bim, in a mid or full tower. So you could have yourself a portable and powerful desktop PC, not much bigger than an Xbox One console that looks great on your desk or in your living room as a media PC, wherever you want it. And that really is why your next PC, whether you're building yourself or buying one, should be a mini ITX build. I do wholeheartedly recommend this Silverson Raven R VZ02 case as well. And no, they're not paying me to say that. I promise you I bought this myself. Of course, there are other great mini ITX PC cases like the NZXT Manta, the Corsair 250D, the Fractal 500, or the Thermaltake Core V1. They're all great and there's a wide range to choose from so it really comes down to your budget and the reviews. Do take a look at some of the reviews but personally I'm really happy with this Raven. So if you have any questions do let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to respond and as I say I've listed all of the components I've used in this build in the description below this video as well as a couple of the other budget options if you want to save a few bucks or quid here and there. Thank you very much for watching guys. Please do like, share and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.